Hey, what's up guys? It's me, John. Um, I told John recently on Instagram that I was going to start making some devotional videos. So right now I'd um, like to share one with y'all today. Um, sorry for being too late, you know, I mean, I had like work and everything and I'm telling you college really kills you whenever you're doing this stuff. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, today, the devotion I really um, read and I stuck out to me was a devotion called um, How to Be a Wiser Reprover. Um, this one is out of um, Proverbs 25, 12. So let's just get right to the chase and define that word. Like, what does reprover mean? When we look it up, it says reprove means to gently criticize or correct. So basically a reprover challenges and corrects people whom they love, basically. And so today's verse where I got that from, from Proverbs 25, 12, shows us how much um, wisdom a reprover has. So let's read the verse. So Proverbs 25, 12, and you can pull out your Bible and listen or I'll just read it to you. Um, it says, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. So whenever you read this verse, there are really two big things that we should take away from this. The first thing is that wise reprovers are worth their weight in gold. And the second thing here is that those who listen to a wise reprover gain something as valuable as gold. So let's just go back for a second and redefine that. So what is a wise reprover then? Like why, why is this important? Why do we need, need to worry about this? So it basically means a list of three things we get from this verse. First off, a wise reprover fears God. So jump around scripture a little bit. I'm gonna give you a little bit of context. Not exactly read the whole verses, but just, you know, prove some points to be able to show you, you know, how this, you know, blends into what we're talking about. So first off in Proverbs 1, 7, 1, 7, it tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So definitely being wisdom, you know, you look at people like Solomon, David, wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Knowledge definitely began to be the thing that created wisdom and made somebody wise, especially in those days, even today. So because of this, a wise reprover first fears God. So one question you really need to ask yourself here is what does it mean to fear God? And for me personally, whenever I think of that, it's kind of, you know, having, not like being scared of him, you know, like not like Halloween or anything, like fearing God, like, oh, he's just a terrible person. It's more having this, you know, solemn like reverence for God, you know, having that, um, faith that he's going to deliver you and knowing that through every situation, you know, God is there and has an answer for you and staying straight on. So let's continue. Um, so in Proverbs 8, 13, it says that the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance in the way of evil are a perverted speech that I hate. So in this, it shows that fearing God means loving what he loves and hating what he hates. So just like a child who wants to please their you know, good father, um, those who fear good long to please and be like him. In addition to that, a second thing is that a wise reprover respects, loves, and wants to emulate God or be like him, basically. And also a wise reprover loves people. So because of a wise reprover's love of God, he or she too loves people. This means that they shouldn't be argumentative, judgmental, or condemning. Instead, a wise reprover seeks to correct someone is because they love them. Not because they simply like to be in control or, you know, be a control freak. I mean, I can definitely think of times, you know, I've had the opportunity to be able to play in worship ministries in Texas whenever I lived there and also be able to serve in prison ministries. I gotta say, whenever you're in like a position of leadership, I gotta tell you, it's especially hard to, you know, stay intact and not want to sit there and, you know, be the boss. but really be sure that what you're doing you do through the spirit and that you're not doing it of your own self pride so i can definitely re relate to that but one thing here that you gotta remember is that remember the fear of the lord means a spirit of humility prevails because god resists the proud so kind of like what i was just saying about my personal example so all of this going back to the wise reprover thing we just defined this means that a wise reprover, reprover sorry will speak gently and in a way the other person can understand and truly hear so also really good, you know, leadership aspects as well. And the third thing is that a wise reprover is bold. So from this, it shows that he's bold, he's courageous. And after all, you know, offering instruction when you see someone else out of alignment with God's work can be very difficult. Like, I don't know about y'all, but whenever somebody comes up to me and tells me that I'm doing the wrong thing or I said something wrong in church, it kind of catches me off guard. I'm like, you know, like, who are you, God? I mean, that seems to be like my sort of reaction and we're all kind of rebellious, but those people that have this ability and even us that have that ability, you know, we gotta, we gotta be able to keep ourselves spiritually in check, you know, because a lot of times I catch myself, you know, thinking that something is okay, but in actuality, when somebody finally calls me on it, I'm like, whatever, dude, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Then all of a sudden I think about it, I'm like, you know what? He's actually right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in the wrong. But um, yeah, that's just a perfect example for me. Um, so moving on from there, so like I said, a wise reprover, it takes boldness to be one. So why does it? 
because a wise reprover loves God and loves people. They want the good for them and know that correction is beneficial to all the brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, however, they're also bold because, like, um, the word because they know the word of God and they know that its truth is unwavering. So this means that, you know, as a wise um, reprover, they're so confident that they do not doubt it and like always trust that the Bible is going to deliver them. So definitely to be at that level is something I really strive for because it's really hard on a day-to-day -day basis, especially being in college and being constantly distracted by so many like terrible things. It's just hard to fall in that place, but you know what? People that are able to do this, it's it's really, really powerful. So I kind of really want to leave y'all with two questions to think about, you know, what I've said about being a wise reprover. So first off, you know, are you listening to God? Are, are you being obedient? You know, I mean, do you listen to the wise reprovers that are in your life, you know, whether it be a youth minister, whether it be your pastor, it doesn't have to be the, any church leaders. It could be your mom, your dad, if you see them as your, you know, wise reprover kind of model to go after. Um, so whenever you um, see this and someone is offered to correct you and they fulfill the above three criteria I've described, consider that they may be a wise approval God has placed for your benefit in your life. So don't just, you know, write them off as, you know, oh, dad's just coming down on me again or whatever. Just try to listen, try to be open, you know? And the next question that I want you to focus on is, do you reprove these, those in error? So whenever you notice them or someone is out of step with God's word, do you reprove them? Like, do you go out of your way to be like, hey, you know, that's not cool? I mean, this may mean something as simple as someone in your church or a friend or even, honestly, I mean, it takes guts, but even like your own like youth pastor or your pastor too sometimes, they say something out of line. So like whenever they're in error, you know, you want to remember, don't be arrogant. Don't be like, you know, I'm, I'm holier than thou kind of attitude. Just, you know, step up and say something, you know, because I really think it's important for each of us to be accountable to each other and keep each other in check. Um, anyway, guys, that's, that's what I read this morning out of... Um, Sorry, Proverbs 25, 12, you know, I really enjoy reading Proverbs a lot because I love all the wisdom that Solomon like leaves for us and David also. And it's just, it makes me feel terrible about how I live my day-to-day -day life sometimes, but you just gotta keep your head up. Anyways, guys, um, this is my first attempt, so it's a little, it's a little rough, so I probably talked your head off a little bit, but if you liked it, hey, you know, give a shout out, keep on listening. Um, I promise it'll get better. Um, but just do me a favor. Um, if you like this, go ahead and give it a like and, um, um, furthermore, in the comments, if you have a prayer request or if it's a personal um, prayer request or something, go ahead and uh, DM me. I mean, you know, I'll make sure that I'll pray for it personally, and then we have a group in my church, The Edge, that I'll be able to get together, and um, we'll be sure to pray for you as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for taking time to listen to this video. If you survived all eight minutes of hearing me talk, and um, have a great night. Have a great week, guys, and I'll be posting here tomorrow. So see you then.